Even better. Good morning, Modern Steaders. Do I get a good treat for you today? Well, if it's not a good treat for you, it's a good treat for me. Let's get started. If you hear a bunch of commotion, Olivia and her cousin are upstairs. We got the day off today, or she's got the day off because of winter vacation. So she's staying home. And I got the day off because of it. And we got her cousin here. They're upstairs playing Lego. So you hear a lot of chaos. That's what it is. All right, now that we got the top of our toolbox covered up and cleaned, we can get to the treat. I got my Christmas present, but I was waiting to use it until we got in our leather conditioner waterproofing. Let's go over here and I'll show it to you. We got our waterproofing, it's called bees butter, bees wax and other natural animal oils. But we got a nice leather apron made. We had an apron for the pig harvesting class, and we've used our apron for harvesting chickens, but we were missing something. So we had a custom one made for our Christmas present. Let me show you. The biggest thing I was missing on my other apron was a place to store my knife. So I had the leather worker add in a place for knife storage. On the back side, they covered it with leather, but in between the leather is like a kydex, so the knife cannot cut through the back side of the leather. We got a ring here to hang a clasp on. Right here we have a leather strap we can hang a rag on. We got another slit here we can put our sharpie and this is pretty cool. We have our embossed logo on a pocket. Nice stitching on it and riveted. Double rivets on each side for our towel holder and we have our D-ring for the rivet for our rear strap we have a nice clasp so we're going to put it on and off nice and adjustable same thing with the neck strap it's adjustable I'll show you guys more of its conveniences and uses, but first, let's get it covered with our bees butter. I did a little test area to make sure, so it's gonna change the color. Anytime you put a natural oil or protector on your leather, it's gonna change the color. So this is the natural color when we got it. And I tested it right here. That's what it looks like after we use the bees butter. When I first put it on, it's a little bit darker, but then after a day or so, it'll lighten up a little bit more. <clears throat> if we leave the apron alone and we don't protect it, if we get an oil on it, if we get it dirty, if we get any blood on it. Crazy kids went outside. It's still nine below out. <sighs> I'm staying inside as long as I can. I gotta go out later on today and put some bacon in the cold smoker and smoke it. That'll be cold smoked bacon. The reason we're putting bees butter on our leather apron is, is I want this protected well. When I'm working, I'm usually working and I'm not worried about getting dirty. And I got this nice apron. I want this to last me my lifetime and be able to hand it down to Olivia someday. So I want to preserve it with a nice bees butter so that way if it gets dirty or if I get anything on it, I can just wipe it off. I don't want to be worrying about, oh, did I get something on my apron? Am I going to be able to get this off? I want to be able to put my apron on and have it as an extension of my clothes. So I don't got to worry about my clothes getting dirty. I can have my knife right in it. I can have my rag, wipe my dirty hands. That's my thought process. I want this to be as waterproofed as possible. I'll do one coat, let it sit. I might have to do another one. See like right here, touching it with greasy fingers, you get this blotchiness. That's why we want to cover the whole apron. So that way we don't got to worry about it. If I'm working with a slab of bacon that's got some fat exposed, or if I got lard in my hands and get it wiped on my apron, I don't want to just have splotchiness.
hear the kids are knocking. What are you, cold already? Yeah. Your hair looks all frosted. It took forever. What? I said it took forever. Well, I weren't expecting you in the house already. You've only been outside for five minutes. Yeah, so, cool. yeah that's what happens when it's nine below out. What? It's nine degrees below zero outside. You look cold. Pluto, be nice. You look at your face. I can't mm. see anything. No. I'm curious to see what happens to the logo. If it blends in more or if it stands out more. Yet. Have to wait and see. Ooh, I like the feel of it already, and it's not even polished or nothing. I am excited. Now I was able to find this apron, believe it or not, for the same price as a waxed canvas apron. looking kind of blotchy right now but when we're all done it's gonna look nice make sure I get both sides of the strap you want to keep the threads coated nicely too, that'll keep the threads from dry rotting and drying out. <clears throat> dry for a little while. I just want to take a nice soft hair bristle brush to it and just brush it. So soft now. Oh, that's nice. One or two more coats probably wouldn't hurt, but I'm not going to put any more on today. I'm going to leave it like this and we can always touch it up and redo it, say six months down the road, if we think it needs it. During our next pig harvesting class, we'll get some nice pig fat on it and that'll work in nice to the leather also. So, this is the original color. After, ooh, it's so soft now. I'm working on writing the chicken pot pie recipe. I had it all written out, the ingredients. I had the start of the instructions done last night. I come to get it up again this morning, and it was all gone! I gotta start all over again. Whew. We're in the process of doing it. So when this video is live, fingers crossed, the blog post should be live too, and I'll post it in the description, and I'll pin it as the first comment. Okay, I just went out and fired up the cold smoker. I want to cut the skin off the back side of my pork belly. The reason for that is I want to make sure that both sides of the pork belly get an even smoke. It can be a little tricky at this point cutting off the skin because it is hard. And you want to make sure you get as close to the skin as you can. You don't want to leave any of that good fat behind. 
Gotta make sure you have a good, sharp knife, and that'll help you with this process. That'll make cracklings are a nice dog treat for your dogs. I bought a bacon hook this time, so we can try hanging it with a bacon hook. Watch your fingers. You want to pierce the bacon, not you. Nice. Think you can agree with me? Today we're really going to be cold smoking. Hey, look at that, it's snowing out. <clears throat> Even better. The thermometer hasn't moved. But it's smoking. Oh yeah. Smells nice and sweet, the apple wood. Hang that in there. Let's go check on the fire. The way I started it today is I brought out a little bucket of coals from our wood stove. And I put that on top of some small apple wood branches. So this bacon we're making is from pigs that we raised here at Lumna Acres and the apple wood we're smoking with is from apple wood trees here also. Yeah, that should be good for now, keep an eye on it. Right here are our root cellar vents. With it being 16 below zero the last couple of nights, the root cellar with the vents closed has been below freezing. This morning it was 29. I don't want that. What we're gonna try today is, is I got a leftover piece of rigid foam. I'm gonna put it in front of the vents. I'm just gonna leave it here. I'll put my Christmas tree in front of it just to hold it and see if this helps and if this works. We'll figure out a better situation, something that looks nicer than this. But, we, but before we go and make something, I want to make sure it works first. I don't mind if the root cellar stays 33. I just don't want it below freezing because I don't want our meats, our vegetables, or anything else like that to freeze in there. Do you want to help make some brownies? You want to go first? All right. Step up to the bowl. We need to add in, I'll have you stir. Stir, ready? There you go. Keep going. You got to stir it for like a minute. I got to add in some more stuff. It smells like butter popcorn. Butter and sugar. Where are your cups? I'm thirsty. Want water? Yeah. I'm gonna add in a little bit of vanilla yeah. extract. Yeah. Vanilla beans, the fork good. 
Don't over mix it though. Why would I over mix it? it smells like coffee. It smells like coffee. It's chocolate. I hope you didn't put coffee in there. Those would be some weird brownies. Is that the best part? Uh, does that mean Chase gets to lick the bowl? After we take the batter out of it though, not before. Right? Is it almost ready for the <laughs> oven? Perfect. Now we gotta wait 20 minutes before we can eat them. Sounds boring. Boring? Chase and Olivia said if you want the recipe, you gotta give us 600 thumbs up and then we'll post the recipe on our website, right? I said 500 and they said no, six. And they even wanted to go to a thousand. But I said we'll go for six this time. I think we could make it to a thousand. Oh yeah? I think 600. 600. So 600 thumbs up and we'll post the recipe. They are good. Here's the apron all finished. It, look, it feels nice and soft and you can feel it's going to have some water protected to it which is awesome. We have the knife slit right here so we can keep whatever knife we need at the time on our apron. We have another slit right here for a sharpie. So if you're packaging meat or if you're packaging up a bird Whatever, if you're cooking, sometimes you gotta take notes. You can put a pencil or a sharpie right there. Your hands are always getting dirty when you're working. You need a place to wipe your hands. You don't wanna wipe one your apron. Usually I used to stick it in my back pocket or my pocket. It's not easy accessible. With this, you can just, you always have it right there. You can hang another rag here or anything else off a carabiner that we'd like. This is really nice when you're cutting up and processing your animal. You always have a knife right at your hands. When you don't need it, you can just stick it in your apron and be done with it. Especially when you're harvesting chickens. I found when you're getting done slitting the neck, I'm always putting it on top of my killing cones and it's falling on the ground. You put it somewhere that you're looking for it. With the apron, boom, it's right there. This is gonna be so convenient. I'm so excited. We're gonna be doing a lot of cooking in the apron. We'll be doing a lot of harvesting and processing. We're, we're, when we're working in our outdoor kitchen, we'll be wearing this all the time. When we're harvesting our vegetables. Oh, so exciting. I'm a tool guy, and this is just another tool belt. It's instead of a tool belt, this is our cooking tool belt, I guess you'd call it. So, I hope you like the apron. I'm pretty excited with the way it turned out. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.